Hey, Dr. Gundry here. Today, we're getting back to the basics. We're talking about one of the topics I'm best known for, lectins. That's right, it's Lectins 101 with Dr. Gundry. Now, I'll dive right in in just a moment. But first, I want to remind you to go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video. And leave a comment below if you've got any questions. Okay, let's talk lectins. First of all, what the heck is a lectin? Well, lectins are plant proteins. They're found in all sorts of members of the vegetable kingdom, and they happen to be one of nature's greatest defenses against any hungry animal or human being. Now, not all lectins are toxic, but many are. And when you've got a lectin intolerance, you don't want to ingest any one of these plant proteins because the consequences can be pretty severe. You see, nature's got it all figured out. Plants suppose that if you eat something that makes you sick, you'll steer clear of it the next time you're hungry. And in some cases, eating too many lectins can lead to pretty severe consequences. I'm talking about digestive issues like constipation or diarrhea, embarrassing gas, bloating, nausea, low energy, and even weight gain. All in all, lectins can spell bad news for your health. So it makes sense to limit your exposure to lectins whenever possible and to counteract it the rest of the time. I'll explain how to do both. First of all, what foods are high in lectins? Well, a lot of the foods on my famous no list are loaded with lectins. And if you're not familiar with my diet, you may be surprised to learn that even some so-called healthy foods are on the list. Here's a short list of potential foods to avoid in your diet. Legumes, including beans, lentils, peas, and peanuts. Yep, peanuts are actually part of the bean family and not the nut family and should be avoided at all costs. It's also worth avoiding grains like wheat, rice, barley, quinoa, and I'm sorry to say it, oats. They're all loaded with lectins. And so are members of the nightshade family, which includes eggplant, potatoes, tomatoes, and peppers. Another lectin-loaded family of food, squash. Yes, so this includes zucchini squash, as well as butternut, acorn, and even pumpkin. Now, I might have just mentioned a food you really like, which means you might be thinking, Dr. Gundry, I can't give that up. Well, I generally encourage people to give up as many lectin-loaded foods as possible. But there are some things you can do to help minimize the impact of lectins. For a lot of fruits, yep, tomatoes and squash are fruits, most of the lectins are in the peels and the seeds. So peeling and deseeding can help get rid of a good amount of lectins in the food you eat. And you can also pressure cook things like nightshades and legumes. Personally, I'm a huge fan of pressure cooked beans as a healthy source of plant-based protein. But bad news, you can't pressure cook the lectins out of grains like wheat, barley, and oats. So I suggest finding alternatives for at least those. Now, even I eat the bread and pasta when I'm traveling in France and Italy. I can't resist. And I completely understand there are some foods that are impossible to avoid completely. That's why I created Lectin Shield. It's an amazing formula designed to help counteract the effects of lectins. So you can enjoy the occasional lectin-loaded meal worry-free. And it's always in my suitcase for my trips to Europe because Lectin Shield helps keep me feeling great no matter what's on the menu. If you want to know more about Lectin Shield, go ahead and click the link in the description below to get all the details. If you're vigilant, informed, and careful about your lectin intake, you'll be wowed by how great you feel. You might notice things like improved digestion, less gassiness, a more comfortable feeling body, or an easier time slimming down. My recipe for success, avoid lectin-heavy foods whenever possible, and add Lectin Shield to your routine on the days when you just can't avoid lectins. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you. Pretty powerful antioxidant properties. Which brings me to my next question. Are antioxidants and polyphenols the same thing? Yes and no. 
Polyphenols are a type of antioxidants, but not all antioxidants are polyphenols. 